One of the more popular videos on my channel is Vollog 223 where I reviewed the Paron JXD5 crimping tool. I still have this, it's still working great and I use it occasionally to do some crimp jobs. I mean it's not going to be the best tool you can buy or produce the highest quality crimps but for hobby level and for what you pay it's definitely the best deal. And the only downside to uh, this tool is that with the included jaws that you get you can't exactly crimp very small GST connectors or other types of connectors like Jam, Molex or Clickmate. So this is typically good for these types of uh, crimps and it works really well for that. But in order to cover smaller crimps as well, I decided to give this tool a try, which is the IWIS Mini. And this is the 2820 model, which means this is specified for AWG20 up to AWG28. So in general for thinner wires and crimps, but there is also the 2412M model, which is specified for AWG24, to AWG12 and uh, this particular tool was provided by banggood.com for free for the purpose of this review and should you decide to order one there will be a link in the description below for you to check it out. Unfortunately at the time of publishing this video the tool was actually under restocking uh, but I'm hoping it should be back in stock pretty soon. Construction wise this is not a ratchet type crimp but there is nothing wrong with not having a ratchet. In fact in some cases especially for cheap crimp tools the ratchet mechanism can be a problem and this can also be a matter of preference as some users prefer not having a ratchet system. But it's important to know that when you don't have a ratchet system you have to make sure you are applying the correct force and travel for a good crimp and it can take some practice to reach that as it can vary from one crimp to another. This is my first non-ratchet type crimp tool so we'll see how well I do and what level of quality I can get out of this crimp tool by looking at a few examples in a few minutes. But before we continue with the review of the tool, let me mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times, but you can get more than PCBs manufactured with PCBWay for example, right now they are offering a discount on the 3D printing service or a discount for four and six layer PCBs. So it might make sense to stop messing with your own 3D printer and start getting high quality parts directly from a good supplier. Check out their website, link below. Looking closely at the crimp tool, I would say that this is likely manufactured part of a stamping process from a large sheet of metal. Uh, and they only CNC like the depth for the different crimps, uh, which means the actual resulting die on the crimp tool is not going to be as perfect or tight tolerance as it would be from a um, high precision CNC machining process, but this obviously lowers their production cost, which makes the tool much more affordable. And if the die and stamping tool is precise enough, this could result in a perfectly usable tool. Also, by looking closely at how the die part is uh, constructed, we notice uh, it's thin and it has different thicknesses, uh, which means we'll always have to do like a two-part crimp, first for the part that holds the copper wires and the second one for the cable insulation. I'll be showing the technique in a few moments. The handle covers are soft and a nice touch is that they have this uh, stopper now built into the metal part which will prevent the handles from sliding off which is a common issue with many cheap tools. When not in use uh, you can store the tool by using this stopper mechanism to lock it in. The actual list of uh, crimp types that this tool supports is available from the manufacturer and I will drop a link to this in the description below for you to check it out. On the packaging material itself you do get some nice instructions and some useful tips and tricks on how to get you started with good crimps. Um, for example here is something super important. Always select the right size slot on the crimping tool. When the two wings are parallel they should fit perfectly and snug into the slot so make sure you check out these instructions. They can be really useful so that you get a good start with crimping. Now it's time for some crimping. I have here some JST PH crimps and connectors. These are 2.0 millimeter pitch connectors. They're pretty small crimps but not the smallest I am going to need. 
I'm going to be using 30 AWG silicon wire, which typically has thicker insulation. And you'll need some kind of wire stripping tool and there will be some trial and error for getting the correct stripping length for a particular type of connector. I will put a link in the description uh, of the video to the tool that I'm using. This seems to be a perfect match because it fits the same size of wire thicknesses as the crimp tool. The key point here is to strip enough of the wire so that it's completely crimped by the electrical part of the connection but not so much that it extends into the connector causing trouble on insertion. So like I said, a lot of trial and error until you get it right. In this case, the electrical part of the connector, uh, the crimp that grabs onto the wire seems to fit in the 1.3 millimeter slot. And first you crimp the electrical part with the wire inserted right until the insulation jacket hits the wings that need to crimp the wire, but don't overdo it, uh, such as to block correct crimping uh, of the first set of wings by inserting too much. Next you'll crimp the insulation part and here you might have to adjust your pressure because depending on the insulation thickness you don't want to overdo it. You'll just deform the connector and it might not slide into the shell anymore. And on my first attempt you can see how I deform the crimp uh, by applying too much force but it still inserts just fine into the housing and it's a solid crimp. Not a pretty one but functional. Now if you want to do a quick check of your connector, you can just pull on the wire and it should be firmly attached to the crimp, nothing should slide or move. On my second crimp, I used the same 1.3mm die for the electrical part, but I moved to the next size for the insulation of the wire and this resulted in a better result, a better fit for the slightly thicker insulation on this wire I used. Maybe less pressure on the crimp tool would have been better, but as you can see and as I've mentioned, your results will improve as you do more and more of these crimps and you get a better feel for the tool. And now La Pièce de la Résistance, some JSTSH connectors with, which are just one millimeter pitch. Very small crimps and I use these on my Volvoline connectors. I will typically get these pre-crimped, but sometimes you might need an odd custom cable and I might need to crimp these, so let's see if I can get some working results. It was very difficult to fit the very small crimp on the 1mm die just because it's so tiny and it slides around, it's difficult to handle, but I managed to get it in there and I successfully crimped the wires first. First, then uh, crimping the insulation on the same 1mm die was slightly easier and although the results look fine on a first glance it is actually not a very good crimp because i stripped away too much insulation and so you can see the wires are just sticking way too much forward into the connector by comparison here's a factory crimp you'll notice how the wires don't stick out so it will probably take me i don't know a full day until i get all of the things right for such a small crimp but the important thing to take away from this test is that the tool can do it and it's just a matter of practicing. I can also share a few tips and tricks that will help you get better crimps and the first would be to always pick the correct size on the tool for the crimp that you're using. Use the instructions on the packaging, uh, this will really help you get started. Then always use a wire size that fits uh, the crimp that you're using, in particular pay attention to the insulation thickness. While these two uh, wires, the red one and the blue one, are both AWG30, you can see there is a massive difference in the thickness due to having different insulation. So these two will not fit the same die slot or even the same crimp size. And the third tip would be to practice until you get it right. There will be a combination of factors like wire stripping length, how far you insert the wire, crimping pressure, and until you get all of these just right, it will take you some practice. I would say crimping this one millimeter pitch um, connector is pretty difficult, so I would try to get these pre-crimped, but if you're in need of some custom cables, then you'll have to get yourself uh, the tool and do it yourself. Can I recommend this tool? Absolutely, it does the job just fine, especially considering the cost, so make sure you check out the links I've placed in the description to places where you can buy this. By the time you're watching this video, let's hope that the product will be back in stock. That was all for today. Uh, I would really like to hear your feedback in the comments below. Let me know if you've tried crimping your own wires and how easy do you find crimping smaller sizes like this JST-SH connector. 
with just one millimeter uh, pin pitch. If you like to support the channel for the awesome content I produce, you can start by hitting the like button on this video and you can also join my Patreon for as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you next time.